everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sauceman, joined today by Drew Dinkmeyer of DailyRoto.com as we take a look at tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Drew? Uh, not much. Pretty excited about this eight-game slate. Just kind of that sweet spot number of games that I like. Uh, sometimes you get those 12-game slates, they feel a little bit overwhelming. These kind of upper mid-tier size slates are really good to focus in on the plays. Let's begin at point guard where, for the second consecutive night, we go back to Luka Doncic, whose price is high, but according to you, not high enough. <laughs> yeah, in terms of the stars on this slate, you know, you've got Luka Doncic and you've got Giannis Antetokounmpo. And Giannis has just got a great game environment against Washington. They've got a total around 130. But there's a lot of blowout risk and the small forward position has a lot of value. So we like Luka Doncic as kind of the primary spend on this slate. You can pretty much afford one and then work through the rest of the values to make it work. Point guard has fewer options that we think are really, really compelling on the slate from a value perspective. And Doncic has this really good matchup against Phoenix, who ranks 20th in defensive efficiency against opposing point guards particularly so we even though it's the second night of a back-to-back -back, Giannis a little bit more rested than Luca we think the positional scarcity here tilts the edge slightly in Luca's favor we have the two projected very very similarly lean on that positional edge uh to go with Luca tonight as your spend Luca always a good selection here and tonight well no different in this matchup against the Phoenix Suns fast paced high scoring all reasons to get Luca locked and loaded into your lineup Another star, Drew, that you're in on tonight is Pascal Siakam of the Raptors, who, while not priced what he once was, still pretty highly priced. Why do you like Siakam here tonight? Yeah, that's the big key. You know, he's not priced like the star that he has been throughout the course of the season. Early in the season when Pascal Siakam was really going before the injury, we saw the price tag get closer to 9,000, and now it's still priced below 8,000. The matchup is really compelling tonight against Atlanta, a team that allows the most uh, steals and blocks in the league against opposing front court players. Really good environment, up-tempo, fast-paced. Sure, there's a little bit of blowout risk with Toronto playing at home, but we expect Pascal Siakam under 8,000 to be one of the most efficient permanent producers at his position on this slate. And we think the price tag merits uh, certainly consideration, even with some of that blowout risk. Risk is there for Siakam, but as talented as he is, he should get in your lineup, especially, like we said, at a price that just isn't as high as it was earlier in the season. Same player, same skill set, just less of a price. Sounds like a winning combination to us. Finally, the last star, you got to get in there. It's DeAndre Ayton. We mentioned this Suns Mavericks game earlier. Why do you go with Ayton, the Suns center here? Yeah, with Aiden moving into that starting lineup and kind of uh, supplanting Aaron Baines through through some injury issues for Baines, we've seen Aiden really play uh, well in some of those smaller ball lineups for Phoenix on the whole. They play him with a lot of wings surrounding him. The rebound rate's been up over 20%, the usage rate in the low 20s as well. And Dallas is a team that has struggled uh, recently against the opposing center position. So we think this is a good spot for Aiden. The price tag is really good compared to the other centers. You know, it's two or three thousand dollars less than most of the other compelling centers on this slate. And that price uh, discount allows you to kind of build a more balanced lineup on the whole, uh, getting in some of those other values that are a little bit discounted, like Siakam, uh, in terms of your stars. So we think building through Doncic, Siakam, Aiton, uh, Aiton tonight really opens up a lot of value in your lineups and, and pa packs the lineups with a bunch of uh, upside as well. Love the upside that DeAndre Aiton brings on a nightly basis. And in tonight's lineup, where we do have some money to spend, Aiton is a good call at center. So I mentioned Zion Williamson. Again, we'll hold there. But let's get to the Boston Celtics, who are facing Miami tonight. Miami's calling the second night of back-to-back. -back. Boston's still expected to be without Jason Tatum. Who steps up in Tatum's absence? Well, it's Daniel Tice, who's in a really good spot tonight. Yeah, no Jason Tatum, but also no Ennis Cancer, which has really opened up minutes for Daniel Tice. He got his minutes into the 30s. And I think, you know, from a from a defensive perspective, if you look at Boston, they're very comfortable playing kind of smaller ball lineups uh, with Grant Williams at the center and some other guys. But their best lineups this year have been with Daniel Tice at the center position. He's played so well defensively. And against Miami, you need that defensive presence with how well Bam Adebayo has played. I know the price tags crept up into the 5,000s here for Daniel Tice, which might seem expensive at first glance. But he's a guy whose minutes have been kind of stuck in the low 20s throughout most of the season because of the confidence that they have in Ennis Cancer behind them. Without Ennis Cancer tonight, with this matchup against Bam Adebayo, we're projecting the minutes to reach up towards 30 once again. And that's just too cheap for Daniel Tice, a guy who can get a bunch of steals and blocks, pretty efficient player. A tough matchup, but a pretty good price tag at 5200 Yeah, $5,200 in a, in a tough spot against Bam. But the minutes for Tice without Tatum, without Ennis Cancer, they should be plentiful, as you said, over 30 minutes in their last contest against New Orleans. We'll see where Tice can get up to tonight. We keep circling around him for good reason. It's Zion Williamson, who, and I mentioned it to you off the air, Drew, he's too fun not to play. 
<laughs> yeah, you want to play Zion. You want to you want to watch and, and root and see the highlight reels and and know that they're racking up fantasy points for you and your Fanduel lineups as well. Unfortunately enough, the price tag still remains pretty good here. He got up to 27 minutes last game. We're projecting 28 this game. We don't think they'll extend him much beyond that. We think you know most of the rest of the season he'll kind of settle in this 27 to 30 range on a nightly basis, but. He's so efficient. He's been uh, just under 1.5 FanDuel points per minute uh, so far in this stretch. Incredible efficiency offensively, which is exactly what we saw from Zion in Duke. It's what we saw from Zion in the Summer League. 6,300 is still too cheap. He's done it against better defenses uh, in, in his first three games than he will face tonight against Cleveland. So we think it's a good spot to attack at a relatively thin power forward position. He's our favorite play at the position by a wide margin. The price is right. It's really fun to do. And Zion Williamson is finally starting to get going for the New Orleans Pelicans. A lot to like here with Zion. Get him in the lineup tonight. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Drew, we appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. Thanks so much. Enjoy the games tonight, Greg. You as well, Drew. Everybody out there, we appreciate you watching. Tomorrow, Tom Mecchio will join me as we take a look at tomorrow's NBA slate. Have a great night. Enjoy the games, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.